Hello everyone and welcome back. In this part of the tutorial series, we're going to focus heavily on sculpting in detail using ZBrush. So in this video, what we'll do is I'll show you guys how to export your models from Maya, how to import those models back into ZBrush, and actually we'll go over the basic sculpting techniques to get some nice detail in our sculpts. So let's go ahead and get started. So back in Maya, we have our model that's ready to be imported into ZBrush. But before we take it into ZBrush, let's clean up our scene just a little bit. So I'm going to name my object. So we'll do GS for gravestone. We'll call this piece the base. We'll do GS. We'll just call this one. We could call it the head or the main. I'll just do main. And since this is where the RIP logo is going to go, we'll just call this one RIP. Just something so we know what these pieces are. Um, well, one thing I always do before I'm getting ready to export is I'll delete my history and freeze my transforms. And remember, those are um, edit, delete by type, history, and modify, freeze, transforms. That's where you can find those. So once the model is good to go, I'll select the objects I want to export. I'll go to File, Export Selection, and I am going to do FBX. You could do OBJ, and if you do OBJ, what it does is it combines all the objects into one subtool in ZBrush, and then you'll import it slightly different, and then you have to break them up. But in this workflow, I'll show FBX just because it's the one I'm, mm, I use the most. So I'm just going to save it to the desktop and I'll call this one gra Gravestone uh, Base. Uh, base Mesh. And I'll export. So now jumping over into ZBrush, let's go ahead and import that FBX that we exported from Maya. So I'm going to hide my spotlight, hit that hide icon. And what I'll do is I'll go to Z plugin, FBX export import, and hit import. I will navigate to where I saved it. And you can see it says file import it. So what it did is in my tool palette, it loaded that GS um, base and the other three objects in as one tool in ZBrush. So if I just click on my canvas and drag it out, there's my object, well, all three objects from Maya. Um, currently, what you need to do is you need to hit this edit button, and I'm going to show you what happens if you don't. Uh, it will just keep dragging out the tool. And when we hit edit, that's when we can start navigating. But now we have all this uh, stuff kind of cluttering our canvas. Uh, so if I hit control N, that clears the canvas. And now we have our model. We can start sculpting. Um, right now, by default, we're in perspect or orthographic view. So if I hit P on the keyboard, that toggles between orthographic and perspective. And that's also this icon right here. And yeah, let's go ahead and get start with some basic sculpting techniques. So for this project, I do have my Wacom tablet. I think for things like sculpting and texturing, it's super important to utilize a drawing tablet. But if you don't have one, it's not the end of the world. You just don't have pressure sensitivity. So if you can't get one, definitely keep exploring in ZBrush and texturing software packages with a mouse. You just are going to have to manually think about like your Z intensity, uh, focal shift, and you'll have to adjust those uh, to get soft results with the mouse and build up volumes and whatnot but with the pressure uh with the tablet if you can afford one i really advise you get one um just so you have that pressure sensitivity and you can subtly build up detail and build up volumes uh the lighter you press or if you want to really go ham on some detail you can press hard on the tablet to get that detail um so I am going to really utilize, for this project, I'm just going to utilize subdivision um, sculpting techniques. Uh, so I'll subdivide these message meshes. What we're going to do is I'll create another subtool for the skull. 
and sculpt that from scratch and then at the end I'll combine them all using Dynamesh so they're all one mesh. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the brushes. Um, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm really going to rely on only a handful of brushes. Um, clay Buildup, da uh, Damien Standard, H Polish, Trim Dynamic. I'll probably use those ones the most. Um, I do have some specialty brushes and like alphas that I, I've downloaded. Uh, we might use some of those, but I don't think so. Um, each brush has a focal shift, draw size, and Z intensity. So uh, focal shift, it's kind of like the fall off of the alpha in that brush. Uh, draw size is self-explanatory. It's the bracket keys on the keyboard that I use to adjust and that changes the, the draw size. If I change the focal shift, you can see that inner circle. It's basically the fall off between the inner circle and the end of the brush. And then Z intensity is how intense I am adding or subtracting that detail. And really that's kind of like the basics of the brush. It's not too crazy. We have different stroke types that we can explore. And we'll probably explore that later on. We have different alphas uh, that we can stamp on. But right now, if I just use my standard brush, um, so by default, I should probably explain the subtools. So if we go to our subtool palette, you can see that FBX that I exported from Maya and brought back into ZBrush. It has the base, the main part, and the RIP sign. They're all separate subtools. And for my purposes, I think it's going to be easier to sculpt detail on these separately than combine them at the end. So that's why they're broken up. But if I'm on the... Uh, RIP sign and try to sculpt on the main nothing's happening that's because I don't have that subtool selected so you can switch between subtools by clicking here in your subtool palette or a nice shortcut is to hold alt and you can click on the subtool so that's super handy so looking at the main one um, you can see I have my standard brush so really this kind of um, you can see our topology here too. So I don't have a lot of vertices to kind of push around to sculpt really fine detail. So the thing about ZBrush is if you're doing big form changes, you oftentimes want less topology. So I'm going to hit B to bring up my brush palette, hit M and V to bring up my move brush. And if we were like really changing the silhouette, we'd probably want a lower resolution. So we have less lumpies in our thing. So we could like go really wild with it. Um, but we're not going to do that. So control Z. Uh, but what we're going to do is pretty much mid to high frequency detail sculpting. Uh, since we got our silhouette down in Maya. So I'm going to scale my brush down. And you can see like now we're moving less since we have a smaller brush. So what I can do is if I go to my geometry palette, I can hit this divide button or the shortcut should be, oops, control D is a shortcut to divide. And now we actually subdivided it. So we have more topology to start sculpting on. And Shift D will go down in your subdivision stack. D will go up. And if you need to add a new subdivision level, uh, you have to be at the highest subdivision and then you can hit um, Control D. Uh, those are the shortcuts. Or you could just use the geometry palette, right? And you can um, cycle through your different subdivision, subdivision levels. Okay. I think we'll keep it that simple for now. I'm going to hit this icon right here to show my wireframe. The shortcut for that is Shift F2. Um, let's make our brush smaller. And so now you can see if I hit B and grab my standard one. So you can see we can sculpt in a finer level of detail because we subdivided this three times. Uh, the cool thing about subdivision sculpting is it translates 
or it populates throughout it propagates throughout the uh, subdivision level so if I'm adding detail on the first subdivision level like make this really big it will propagate up the subdivision stack and vice versa if you're sculpting at a, a higher resolution drop it down it will move the geometry below as needed to define that detail so I'm going to control Z and so that's kind of like the basics I guess um, of what we're going to be utilizing uh, to sculpt detail in, in ZBrush as you can see I still have my reference on my other screen um, so I'm utilizing this to see like what kind of detail I'm going to sculpt in what's the level of detail I'm going to sculpt and I'm not going to sculpt in too much like super high frequency detail uh, like this little nitty gritty stuff I'm going to keep it pretty um, mid frequency detail I think and uh, like just beat up the edges and I think that's going to be the style I want to go for so the first thing I might want to do is get that big crack coming in the side right here. So you can see I'm pretty, even though I've already subdivided this mesh three times, I only have 4,000 active points. Uh, and that's still really low. So I'll divide it one more time. I'm using the standard brush and I'm going to hold alt and you and by default the standard brush adds. So if I hold alt, it's going to cut in. So maybe we can start um let's do it right here. Start beating it up a little bit. Maybe we'll use the Dame standard brush. But that's even still it's like really uh, low res for the level of detail we're trying to put in so let's divide it again oops at 70 let's see what this is doing ah there we go I think we can get away with this for now so I'm using the Dame standard brush and I'm just trying to cut detail for the gravestone I'm being a little bit sloppy with it but that's okay We'll clean it up later. I really want this to be like cut in and chipped, chipped away. I'm not going to be too concerned about the back, to be honest. Um, we're going to, for the sake of time, we're just going to focus on the front. But just know you'd want to think about uh, the back. So I'll hit Alt, click on the RIP sign for that, and I'll subdivide this. Um, Let's do four times. So control D, control D, control D. Let's see if we're getting like the same level of detail. So we could start beating this up as well. And I'll just leave it like that. Okay. I think we're going to want to chip here. Again, I'm looking at my reference. So alt. Probably do one here as well. Definitely start putting this right here. I might use H polish for that one. Um, let's go here. Control D to subdivide. And I'm going to hit B hit H and get my H polish brush again I have my reference up on my other monitor so just for trying to put these kind of plot uh, these details in here Let's 
a lot of this video is just going to be me using these techniques and kind of thinking about what looks good artistically. You don't want to have too much detail. You want to make sure you have enough. I think right here we should have used H polish. If I hold shift, that will smooth. So that comes in handy. And honestly, I think we're getting pretty good block out detail. All right, so let's go ahead and subdivide this. Actually, let's see if there's some, yeah, let's go ahead and subdivide it one more time. Control D, we're only at 30 or 300,000 points. It's not too bad. Once you start getting like in the millions, that's when it's a lot. Okay. So I'm using the H polish brush, just kind of coming over here, clean up a little bit of this detail. Maybe we beat this up like that. And don't be afraid to experiment. Um, ZBrush does a pretty good job of auto saving, but just save in iterations, experiment with stuff. Um, as you'll see later on, I'll I'll actually utilize layers, uh, so that's something you can do to try stuff out. Uh, let's do B P and grab the pinch brush. Kind of grabbing the back a little bit, but I'm not too concerned. BMV move brush. You can try to do that. Just be careful. Oops. Then I'm going to switch my material from this kind of red clay to um, matte cap gray. I like this one better. Let's look at what trim dynamic does. It kind of works like the, um, the H polish brush, but it's a little bit different feel to it. So I think I like relying on H polish more. But you can see we can do some cool things with Trim Dynamic 2 to kind of get some wear on these edges. And again, I'm lightly utilizing... See, that's too strong for me. So, kind of like what it's doing here. So, I just got to be, be really careful with Trim Dynamic Brush. Just want to beat up these edges a little bit. Let's use um, H polish. See what that's going to do for us. So you might want to play with these two brushes, kind of see which one fits your kind of style. Um, don't like what it did here. Let me uh, H polish this. See what one is fitting your style. Um, I still want to be kind of subtle with it. I want it to, I keep zooming out because I want it to read well from a distance. Again, I'm not looking to add like super fine detail. So you'll see me keep zooming out to make sure it reads well.
from afar. Don't think I want to start beating this edge up a little bit. And I don't have symmetry on. Uh, I have a lot. I'm sculpting a lot of asymmetrical detail, but if we want it to, um, and maybe we'll do that for a, a different part. But like, if I hit X, that activates symmetry, and so you can see I'm sculpting on both sides. And if we go to transform, activate symmetry, you can see we can choose what axis our symmetry is on. So X just toggles the activation. Of symmetry but I'm not going to sculpt with symmetry on right now okay and honestly this is all the sculpting not all but a lot of what the sculpting process is going to be just me coming in here roughing up some edges Hit F to focus back on your object. Let's see what happens if we go down a subdivision level and sculpt. Maybe two. I think... Might be quicker if we drop it down. We can play with trim dynamic. Be soft with it. Yeah, I like what trim dynamics doing go up one subdivision level I actually like what trim dynamics doing a lot And this is exactly why I kept these set, uh, pieces separate is because I want to be able to sculpt detail on here without affecting this one and have to worry about masking it out. So we'll go with subdivision level 6. I need to define this uh, kind of detail a bit more. It's okay. Normally, I would probably go toward the back and spend more time. Uh, but I'm just going to quickly do this back one since we'll see it. Uh, I think I'm going to render in the end like at this angle. So as long as I get some detail in the back, this should be, be okay. Right, let's do some cleanup on these. Some of these smaller scrapes, I really think I should have maybe subdivided more. I think I did those too, too low res, but 
the nice thing about ZBrush is you can really mold this digital clay and turn a mistake into uh, some something that looks cool. Sometimes mistakes are too big and you'll just have to do the old hard uh, undo or reset, but that's okay. And I will say, for I am going quicker than I normally would, I think. Um, just for the sake of time. But, even if I'm going a little bit quicker, you can see how we're getting something really interesting. Definitely more interesting than if we were just to take this straight from Maya into something like Substance Painter. Uh, let's not do that. We'll probably just leave that. Okay, let's... Uh, let's see if we can use that pinch brush. There we go. Same here. Probably come back with a Dame Standard brush. Yeah, we might need to subdivide that one one more time. Um. Okay, that's looking good. Let's divide it again. And let's see if I can fix some of these mistakes. Let's do H polish. Pinch brush sometimes tends to like uh move uh move the uh geometry up a little bit. So I was getting like this weird bulge. So I'm just going with the H polish brush to kind of flatten that and let's get the Dame standard. Dame standard's really good. Uh we're in the million poly, so we should be able to get some really fine detail with the Dame Standard brush. And by default, this is one of the brushes that as the Z sub on. So holding Alt, it will make it come out. And we can actually do some cool stuff by with the Dame Standard coming out. And I'll go over the H polish, oops. Smack it down. So you can see how really quickly I was able to really correct my mistake. Uh, I didn't like, I, I tried to sculpt that detail in at too low of a resolution. H polish. So I think that's looking interesting. So I'm using Dame Standard, I'm holding Alt. I'm trying to bring some sharpness back right here. Switch to my H Polish brush and flatten the sides down a bit. All right, so that was a lot of like edge wear. Um, oh, let's do, let's do the same technique here. This is kind of too soft right here, so we can go Dame Standard to really get this crack. This feels a little too soft. And we'll use H polish. Smack it down on those sides a little bit.
that looks like it's reading a lot better. It's not as soft. Um, is it perfect? No. That's okay. Okay. I think that's actually not looking too bad. So we've been working the edge detail a lot, but something that I also want to make sure is like, I don't want this, these surfaces to be flat. Um, especially if I'm going for a more stylized look. Um, Oh, real quick. I can show you like where I might use some. Um, so if I want to like define this a little bit more, we do have like some alphas that you can get. Um, if I mask this, if I want like this to be sharper, I have I use this um, or pack sometimes and I can just like sharpen that that corner. So that's what I use like that for. So it's called orb, orb brush pack, and you can use orb slash. I guess I just don't have enough resolution here, and I don't really want to subdivide it one more time just yet. Um, unfortunately, I just put that detail in way too soon. Um, but something I'll do is um kind of add a little bit of wear to the surface itself, so it's not so flat. Um, and we could do that a couple ways. Uh, we can use like the H polish brush and just kind of stamp it in a little bit. And it's very subtle, but if I switch my material, so th I don't think, uh, this is a material that I got from Orb as well. And this one helps me for like stylized stuff really. So you can see I'm just like beating up the surface a little bit more. I'm being pretty subtle with it, more subtle than what I was doing with the edges. But you can see how when we're at an angle, we're getting uh, some surface detail. And it should be subtle. If it's too strong, you can always go over it with the shift brush, just lightly smooth it out but that little attention to detail and subtlety can really go a long way also this material does a good job of showing you like hey this is probably too red too low res so i'll definitely up res this maybe not yet because i don't want to go too much over a million uh for this but Hopefully, you can start seeing how this is looking really interesting versus like this side, which doesn't have that detail in there. And I'm just, I'm going back and I'm smoothing it. I just want surface variation, make it more interesting so it's not dull and, and flat. But I don't want to go overboard. It might read as like uh, metal. So, like stamped metal or something like that. So, just going kind of subtle with it. Uh, let's see if there's a default material that helps you see this. Because it's, it's harder to see with matte cat gray. But, uh, actually, you can see it. some here just breaking up that flat detail and this is just one technique to do this and it's really quick so that's why I'm doing it but sometimes you can get the clay buildup brush involved and Use uh, H polish to cut away at the clay buildup detail, and that can give you some really interesting results. But then it's like you have to do multiple passes to get that to be subtle enough and look good. 
So that's why I'm I'm opting to do not the laziest way, just the quickest way to add some surface detail variation. And yeah, you can see we're a 24 minutes in. Usually the sculpting phase, I spend a, a, quite a bit of time because I want it to look good. And this can help drive some texture, texturing that we can do later on. So if you get a really good sculpt, um, you can get a really good base. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to pause the video here just so we can see. And I'm going to do this technique for the base and the RIP sign. And then when I come back, we'll jump into like adding the RIP stamp and getting the skull in there because we still got to do those two. All right, so I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to do that stuff. Or maybe I'll record myself and put it in and just speed it up. Uh, but I don't want to spend like too, too long just saying the same things over and over again. So I'll be back shortly.
All right, so now that I got the base detail kind of laid out, um, I'm going to add the RIP text to our mesh. Okay, so let's select this subtool. And in Photoshop, I went ahead and created, let me go ahead and pull that up. I created a alpha that I'm gonna use. So it's just a simple alpha um, and I'm gonna bring this into ZBrush. So let's go over to our, hmm, I think we'll do a uh, Dame Standard, but we might choose a different brush. Oops, not grooming. And what I'll do is I'll switch the alpha. So I'll go to, I'll click on the alpha spot, import, and I will navigate to this alpha. Okay, RIP. So if I drag it, you can see it's not doing what we would want because it's acting like uh, how the brushes act. They kind of have this drag stroke type. So what we want to do is go to our strokes and do drag rectangular. And that will let us carve out the text. Okay, so Dame Standard doesn't look like um, what I want. So what we can do is, um, before we get off the brush, uh, we can go to our brush palette and reset Oops, not all. I'll reset current brush, and that will get our, our default settings back to that brush. So let's try chisel. Okay, and there's a lot of C brushes. I can't remember the second letter to hit to get the chisel brush. Oh, it's the first one. There we go. So this is what this brush does. So let's try this one. So I'll use that alpha set it to rectangular drag and that's actually not too bad so right now it's really strong so what i'll do is and i'm using my mouse um for this part i'll take the intensity way down there we go this is this is looking how i would want it to look oops So text is a little bit weird. So I do want it to sync in ultimately to match my reference, but you can see it's backwards. So I have to hold alt to get to be the correct way. Uh, but then you notice like, well, it's not dipping in. So if we wanted it to poke out, that's fine. Uh, maybe we can do this one more subdivision too. It's kind of a lot, but you're gonna see we're not, we're uh, getting a slightly better result. Uh, I should have probably feathered this alpha in Photoshop as well. I think you can do it in Photoshop or in ZBrush itself, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. So what I want to do is actually I'm going to go to my layers palette and I'll create a new layer. And I'll hold alt because ultimately let's go to our orthographic view too. There we go. Let's try to grab the center. Okay, and this is ultimately what I what I want, except I want it to poke inward, right? So I'll click that. The nice thing about layers is I can hide this layer. So I'll stop recording it. Um, I'll hide the layer, and that detail is stored into the layer. What I can also do is I can set this from positive to negative, and it cuts that text in. So that's more in line with what I would expect to see. So once I do this, I would probably bake this information down once I'm good with it, or I can just continue to sculpt. Uh, I can make a new layer or I'll just record. Uh, let's make a new layer. I'll make a new layer and I can record and sculpt detail onto it. So we can do um, H polish or trim dynamic. So I'm just holding shift and I'm kind of going around here and smoothing this out. Uh, we could use our deformation options as well, but I'm kind of good with the detail on the 
the rest of the area. So I'm just going and quickly smoothing some of this detail out. So it's not so pixelated. And this is already, you can see how high we are um, subdivided in our mesh. We already got 5 million active points, um, which is pretty high, considering we're not doing a lot of super fine detail. So I just want to clean this up a bit. And again, I'm going quicker than I normally would. But really, it's just these curved areas that are causing us the most issues. I'm just quickly, softly using my smooth brush. To, uh, clean that up. The cool thing about layers is, like, if I mess up really bad, I can always just delete this layer. Let me go to something a little less dramatic for materials. Um, I can always stop recording this layer and bring it back. So you can see what I did. So I'm going to actually go back into recording. And just to match, I don't want to just stamp this in and leave it. Let's use trim. Um, am I recording in here? Let's make a new layer. And maybe, uh, it's being super finicky. I think if I really wanted to add the detail I'm thinking about, I'm going to have to subdivide it one more time, unfortunately. So this is where it can get crazy. So let me undo that. So I'm going to bake these layers down. So maybe what we could have done is duplicated this subtool. And, and so we had a version that didn't have this signage in here. Um, But that's okay. Divide one more time. So depending on your hardware, this might be a lot of active points, but there we go. Now you can see we can start getting some of this kind of cool chiseled or worn detail in here. So yeah, if I zoom out, you can see this is going to probably aid us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to kind of chisel this detail so it looks a little bit better and less like stamped in. So it blends in with our rest. And then when we come back, we'll take a look at creating the skull. All right. So now that I kind of went around the edges and kind of beat them up a little bit on the text, uh, now it's time we can actually jump into creating uh, the skull which is kind of my favorite part um, of this project. So I do have my reference up again. Um, so I am going to make a more simplified skull, something a little bit more stylized, not realistic. Uh, so I'll go to my subtool palette, and the first thing I'm going to do is append a sphere. So I'll hit append, grab this sphere. I'll click on it, alt-click, and I'll hit W... And that brings up my move tools, and I can just scale it down, kind of put it in place a little bit, and we can flatten it. Oops, didn't mean to scale it in that. Something like that. Okay. Okay, and then I'm just going to ha really have fun with this and uh, make a skull. So when I'm creating something in ZBrush from scratch, it's a little bit different process than just subdividing. Um, this was simple enough. I could just subdivide the detail. Uh, I didn't need to use like Dynamesh or ZBrush. But for this one, I'm actually going to 
push the forms and I'll probably end up dynameshing somewhere along the line to kind of get better sculpting geometry. Uh, another thing is I want to hit X to activate symmetry because now I'm going to actually utilize the symmetry function. I'll hit BMV for my move tool and the first thing I'm going to do is kind of just block out how I want this skull to look. And understanding anatomy when you're doing anatomy stuff is super, it is helpful, I will say. Even for like cartoon, more cartoony kind of things. And one of the challenges with this is like, uh, the depth wise is going to be flatter than a real skull. So I got to keep that in mind. Okay, I'll probably do the teeth as a separate sub tool, maybe. And again, I'm just working with not a whole lot of topology, uh, blocking out the forms with a little bit of topology, and then as I need more detail, I can sculpt it in. So I'm actually going to dynamesh it, I think, just to get better sculpted topology. And you'll see um, what that's going to do is, like, these polygons are, like, bigger than these ones. So hopefully when I dynamesh, I'll go to geometry, dynamesh, and this default one might be good enough. Uh, let's do one more. Or a little bit more topology. There we go. So you can see it's got weird topology, but that is okay. It's going to be good to like really push these forms and like sculpt some detail. So now I'll use my clay build up brush. I'm going to try to get these brow ridges in here. Go in with my uh, clay build up and I'm just cutting away. So I'm just thinking about like kind of the anatomy of a skull right now. And it's like I said, it's going to be a little bit challenging because I am trying to make it a little bit flatter than I would if this was realistic. Um, that's okay. And we don't really have enough topology to kind of define that area, so I'll hold off on that. Uh, let's try to get something a little bit more interesting going on here. Can use an inflate brush.
so just take your time make sure you're getting really nice shapes interesting shapes um i think that's gonna kind of good the eyes are really big but i think that's Okay, and then I can either redynamesh this at a higher resolution, or what I can do is I can actually just subdivide this. I don't really like the silhouette of what this is doing right here, so let's move this in. There we go. I think that's a bit more interesting and little bit more anatomically correct let's cut away some of this clay right here I'm just lightly using subtracting away DMV let's look at the nose I'm using Damien Standard to kind of define the orbital socket a bit more. And then maybe I'll come in with like H polish to uh, flatten that out. my inflate brush looking at the nose these uh oops damien standard And like I said, anatomy-wise, it's not going to be perfect. We're flattening it, and it is going to be a bit more stylized. <sighs> but that's okay. I think the nose can maybe come down a little bit more. So let's play around with that. I think this is kind of looking uh pretty pretty good. There we go. That looks cool. Always zoom out and just check how that is looking. It does poke out a little bit in that nose. Hmm. Maybe we can sink this in to flatten it a little bit more. 
spot. I'm, I think that's looking pretty good. And let's try to make them, like, not look so evil. Ah, that actually look cooler. <laughs> we'll make them look a little bit evil. Alright, and then I'll just divide this one more time. Same standard. Soften. Smooth out right here. Um, quite build up. So normally what I would do if this was like a, a character is I would probably model their their teeth in as separate objects. But I think, let me try something real quick. Gonna mask that off. I don't want to create too much work when I retopo, so I don't want to get like intricate and have to retopo between. Let me see the teeth. Uh, I think this will work. I'm like this. It's a little bit quicker than appending. Normally what I would do is I would like append another sphere and position it and make a tooth. And But for something this simple, I think we can kind of get away with uh, just sculpting the teeth in. And so something I do want to do is give a little bit of depth here, so I'm not when I when I'm in the retopology phase, I'm not in in here like trying to sculpt behind the teeth, I guess. Just want to be re able to retopo. Make sure it's crashing through the, um, yeah, that should be good. All right, now let's uh, work on the positioning of the teeth because it looks kind of weird. I'm going to kind of do something like that. I mean, as long as it looks, like, appealing, you should be in, in good shape. You can see, anatomy-wise, it's not the best, but we're getting good shapes. Um, I think this is looking good. Maybe we can...
That looks pretty cool. Um, what else do I want to do? I think we might be good. So now this is technically, it's really blobby, right? It's uh, soft and and whatnot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and actually try to make it look like it was chiseled into the gravestone. I'm just cleaning up this. Oops. File's big, so it's going to take a second to autosave now. All right. There we go. Let's get in there and... Same standard, maybe, to define the nasal cavity. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is use, like, my H polish brush to kind of make it look more like stone. Man, I made the eyes really big. <laughs> I'd probably go back and just shrink those, but we'll just live with how it is right now. So I'm lightly using the H polish brush. Standard. Let me get that going in there. Oops. So I'm using Dame Standard, holding Alt to kind of protrude out, make it go out instead of in. Oops, I need a uh, H polish. Get the pinch brush in here. I really don't want gaps um, for this part. Even that's going to be, I can already tell it's going to be a little bit of a pain to retop of, but shouldn't be too, too bad. And before I start sculpting this detail, I should have maybe dynameshed it once because I don't have as much resolution on the teeth. That's okay.
see. Divide it. Hmm. Oh, this lecture looking pretty good. Maybe we can do like some. Uh, Asymmetrical detail in here. Um, let's go ahead and so turn off symmetry by hitting X, and maybe we can just do a couple of. A little bit of asymmetrical detail to help break it up. Yeah, and honestly, I would probably just, again, take your time uh, with shaping up the skull. Make sure it's looking like how you... Ooh, that looks cool. As <laughs> it's asymmetrical. Uh, I'd probably do that if this was a project, but I know if we make it asymmetrical, like, that much different uh, when we go to retopo it... Uh, we'll have to keep that in mind. So I'm just going to keep symmetry on for like these larger form changes. And just play with it. Make sure I'm happy with the shape. And I think I'm getting happier with it. Man, I really like that. <laughs> it was a happy accident, but I liked the, how, the, how this one was like higher a bit. That looks... Uh, see, so this is a good example, I guess. Just adding, like, some subtle subtle asymmetrical detail can help make the piece better. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're working on your, your own projects. So I think this is looking good. Um, the main thing, I just want to really make sure is, like, these... Come straight back and really crash through into the gravestone so it makes my life a little bit easier all right so yeah i think we got all the details sculpted in this is looking pretty pretty good so what I'm going to do now is I want to use Dynamesh to merge them all together because this is kind of like too sharp of detail. You don't have to do this, but it might help the piece if it because this is stone. It's all chiseled from one object. So it might be nice to not have a sharp transition from like the skull to this back. So that's why I'm going to merge them all together. So let's do that next. So to merge my subtools, what I need to do is let's go ahead and save first. That's super important. So we can always get back to here if we need to. Um, if we mess up, we can revert back to this save. Or we could duplicate the subtools. I think how we're going to merge it, though, it will preserve our base subtools. So what I'm going to do is I have all my subtools and I am going to go to merge, merge visible. And what it should do is merge all these visible subtools into one. Since I have, I have 30 million uh, total points, so it's going to take a second.
and you can see what it actually does is it creates a new tool for me that's merge so what I could do is if I want to keep these I could hide these right and then I could append that subtool that it just made and it you can see it's living in here now and if I go to my move tool for example you can see what it did is it put it all in one one sub tool so now what I'm going to do is basically they're still kind of separate um, meshes so if I control shift click you can see I can still like access the the sub tool in there um, control shift click the empty space and yeah, so you can still see they're still separate, but in the same subtool. Now what I'm going to do is I want them to be one subtool. I want the meshes to flow into each other. So to do that, I'm going to go to Geometry, Dynamesh, and this setting needs to be pretty high. And it's asking me multiple subdivision levels. Would you like to freeze sub? Uh, we'll hit no. Let it do its thing. And now you can see it's welded them together. Which is nice. And I had to crank up that Dynamesh level really high because I did sculpt all this kind of finer detail in. So if it's too low, you'll you lose that. And really a, a nice workflow is maybe before I sculpt in a lot of this like high higher frequency detail, maybe I should have did this sooner and then sculpted this detail in. But... This object is simple enough where I think I, I obviously I'm I'm okay with it doing it this way. So you can see here now I'm like just going in. Oops, I should have activated symmetry. So let's undo. So now I would this is the point where I would go in activate symmetry brace. Okay. And maybe it's just smooth this a little bit we could use our deformation functions where we can polish so let's see if that works actually so I'll go to deformation polish if we crank this up see what it does So again, the mesh is relatively dense. Um, we actually took the, because now we have more points than we did before. So we took the um, the resolution and the Dynamesh up way higher than we probably needed to. Uh, but you can see that polish is, it, it polished too much detail, I think. For sure. Uh, so I'd probably go in and manually smooth that. But that is something we can play with. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. It is soft. I'm going to undo that. Um, just because it's softening this detail a bit too much. But those polish features you can definitely play with. I'm just going to go in and manually like kind of smooth this out. We get a nicer transition. Then you might want to do the same thing here because these two meshes are now welded, merged, and welded.
This looks like that wasn't crashing down as far as it should have. Kind of lipping in. That's okay. So I think I'm happy with how this is turning out. So now the mesh is done. And this video is already really long, so I think I'll we'll we'll prep it in the next video. But what we need to do is we need to get this at a lower resolution so that we're able to retopologize it in Maya. So I'll save that for the next video. So hopefully that was a good um, overview of kind of a, my process for maybe creating a relatively simple object uh, and sculpting that detail in ZBrush. Uh, it does have stylized aesthetic to it, but the same kind of concepts can apply when you're creating realistic stuff. It's all about the reference that you gather. Uh, and then you're just paying attention to like the level of detail that you're sculpting in to it. So hopefully you guys found this helpful and I'll catch you guys in the next video.